In this video, we're gonna talk about how do you spark innovation and creativity through slowing down? I wrote down some, some myths in my journal uh, about slowing down, but also about innovation and big ideas and where these things come from. You know, if you really think about it, where, where and when do our big ideas start? You know, it's usually when we've slowed down you know, when you're in the shower, when you're taking a long drive, maybe you're on a hike outside. You know, it's not usually when we're stressed, when we're burned out, when we're overwhelmed, you know, when we're checking email. No, it's usually when we slow down. In fact, usually my first minute of doing meditation, it's me thinking through my to-do list and then I have to pull myself out and come back to the breath. You know, if I want to get more done, oftentimes I have to just, you know, go meditate and then it's like all these ideas, you know, come all at once. Our brain really needs to transcend uh, kind of that daily work and focus to be able to, to brainstorm. Now there's a couple myths though about slowing down. I wrote them down here in my journal. Um, the first one is, you know, the myth that, you know, we get more when we do more. I appreciate people that want to hustle and, you know, go after it and, you know, work nonstop. I appreciate the heart behind it. It's hard work. And oftentimes in kind of current generations, whether it's Gen X or millennials, um, that work ethic's not always there. And so sometimes we need that kick in the pants to say, go out and kill it. But do we always get more when we work more? I would actually say we don't because when we slow down, our quality of life improves. We get to see things that are outside of our regular vision. You know, when we're only focused on kind of what's in front of us, we miss so much. And that extra layer of information actually will help you be a better counselor, consultant, private practice owner, whatever it is that you do. You know, the next myth uh, I would say is that ideas oftentimes people think they have to be new, they have to be amazing kind of new ideas. But more often than not, ideas are actually linking together other good ideas. I realized this recently when I was reading a book and uh, the author had talked on quite a few podcasts about the general concepts of the book. And I realized that this author had spent so much time diving into this topic that his book basically was a dissertation on this topic, bringing together the best information all in one spot. Yeah, I could have gone and found those research studies, but this author brought it all together in one concise idea. Actually, it wasn't that concise. It was a pretty big book. But, you know, when we create new ideas, what we're doing is we're saying, this thing over here that's working well and this other thing over here I think we could bring these together differently to create something new. You know, think about Uber, for example. Um, the founders of that, they were in Paris at a conference, stuck in bad weather, and they couldn't find a taxi. Taxis existed, on-demand video existed, smartphones were just coming out. And they said, this is ridiculous. They linked all those things together to create Uber. Same thing happened with Lyft, very similar kind of process. But then you see that ride sharing moving into, you know, a lot of larger towns have these things called um, birds or I think nest and limes. And they're these like motorized scooters that, you know, go all over the place. And what these things do is they, they make it that you can, you know, ride the scooter, you kind of swipe it and then you travel around and then you leave it. It's bringing together ideas that were already out there, but bringing them together in a new way. That's what innovation is more times than it being something totally brand new. Another myth that I came up with is the idea of staying in your lane. You see a lot of business consultants say, you know, stay in your lane. Um, so if you're a counselor with a mental health practice, you know, stay in your lane, really own that. Yes, that's true. But what often happens is people silo their knowledge and, and they only learn from other people that are in their lane. Instead, we need to expand outside of that and be inspired everywhere. Because the things that I learned from like Sam Harris's podcast or Rob Bell's podcast, Joe Rogan is another one that I'm really into. Um, who else? I wrote down a couple others. Uh, oh yeah, Timothy Ferris. These are people that aren't typically in the mental health private practice space. But what they're talking about of living a better life, you know, having a connection with yourself and with a greater reality, those are things that I can pull into my work as well. That if we're consuming that knowledge, if we're just doing our own self-improvement, that then helps us have more innovative ideas rather than just say, you know, what's the formula for having ideas, which I am going to share what I've found to be a pretty effective formula. 
but it still comes down to your own building of knowledge for yourself so that you can draw from multiple sources that aren't expected from your lane. So uh, take for example, you know, that you are gonna blog about depression. You know, I, a lot of the mental health therapists I work with, uh, they might, you know, be blogging about depression. They might be blogging about things pertinent to their private practice. So I would encourage you to say, okay, I'm gonna just be more aware about depression, but then also what else is there going on other than depression? Well, there's kind of mood issues. There's, uh, you know, weather, there's light, there's exercise. You know, what are the things that are out there that people are saying that make sense around exercise, around socialization, around all these different issues? You know, if you're listening to NPR news in the morning, and there's some article that they talk about, you know, in, you know, say, you know, science or, you know, some kind of journal they talk about. What you want to do is you want to effectively kind of capture that. And that could be in a journal, that could be, you know, an audio memo to yourself, that could be using something like Trello to keep track of all these ideas. We want to keep these ideas somehow in one spot, in a folder, in, in some way that we can go back to them. And then when it's time to write that blog post, you actually have information to draw from. You have other people that are experts in the medical world, in kind of the academic world, in the therapeutic world. We want to have that all come together. And so the best ideas are when you are consuming information so that you curate that for people. That's really what people are paying for when you're a consultant, when you're a counselor, is that you've curated a certain point of view that's unique to you and makes you able to never be competed with, never be competed with. People don't compete with you because you are a person that has brought it together in your own unique way. I would love to help you more. I have a podcast called the Practice the Practice Podcast. The link right here is gonna take you to that. Would love for you to listen to it. I interview all sorts of people that are in the field of private practice, but also outside of it. Uh, I wanna help you to start growing and scale your practice, but even more, I want you to go after these big innovative ideas that are gonna help you change the world in a new way.